zero has to be equal to zero. And you're thinking about those definitions. But I don't think positive definite has this kind of term in it. But it might. I can't remember. Just standing up here. Positive definite. Okay, well, likely I'm wrong here then. Likely this is not decrescent. I'm not going to take off any points because I made the same mistake you did. But if you said that it was not decrescent and I took off points, then you can come see me after class. And I have a question on the number three up there. Uh-huh. What if you took the point x equals 1, 0, then that well, Say that again, I didn't hear you. Uh huh. And it disproves your statement that it's decrescent by choosing x function. If you choose x one equals to one, and x two equals to zero, and just forget the cosine squared t term. Imagine that t is sine of x one to the balance. So you get w is equal to uh, two. But the thing to remember here is, can I pick a W2 that's a positive definite autonomous function that's bigger than W? And are you saying that this isn't bigger than W? Now it's bigger? Okay. The question that I thought of when you were talking about that is also at uh, v, zero, v of 0 is equal to 0 to be decrescent. Um, omega at 0, 0 is not equal to 0. It's equal to 1. Well, now wait a minute. For decrescent, I have to be able to pick a positive definite function W2. So W2 is 0 at 0. Okay, these are good questions. Any, any other questions? Okay, good questions. All right, so um, there were a couple ways to solve this problem. And this, by and large, was the biggest segregator in the grades. Okay, so this was the dynamics of the system. And you could have immediately looked at this problem and said, okay, well, this is m of x times x double dot plus, then I could have called all of this stuff maybe some vm of x, x dot. And then maybe just plus some nonlinear function of x equals some torque. And this looks a lot like things that we did in class. Then you could have gone on and just done what we did in class and solved the problem. Um, but let me back up first. So the problem statement said that m and l are unknown. positive constants. So I took off the greatest amount of points if your control design had M or L in it because these are unknown constants. And I said that X and X dot are measurable. 
And I said, you want to drive x to xd as time goes to infinity. OK, so since you've got x here, um, we talked about in class that you know, you've got two orders higher here. So one good method that we can use, and you didn't have to. Some people use the state space method instead. But one nice convenient design trick is to say, well, first we have to come up with an error. We have our error is xd minus x. And um, we can design our filter tracking error as r equals e dot plus alpha e, or just e. You can let alpha equal 1. And um, then when we develop our error system for r dot, then we'll get our e double dot, which will be x double dot, and it'll include our dynamics. So this was a, this was a smart choice to start off with. Um, So the first step was you could have defined your error system and uh, then develop your open loop error system. But um, even before you did this step, what a clever person could have done, and a lot of people did this, I was surprised that, that a lot of people saw this, was that you know this term, let's face it, this term here was a term that really gave people fits. I mean, I could tell in grading the tests because you didn't know what to do with this 2 plus cosine thing sitting there. Because we, we did a lot of things in class where we had v was equal to 1 half m x squared, where that was just some constant. Um, and, and so that was kind of a bothersome term. But if you look at it, it's always positive and it's measurable, right? So a, a way to make it very efficient for ourselves is just say, well, look, I'm going to get rid of it. It bothers me. I can measure it. Let's just get rid of it. So I'm going to divide through by it and get mx double dot minus 1 half mx dot sine x all over 2 plus cosine x because it's positive, I can do that, plus L cosine x over 2 plus cosine x equals the torque uh, divided by 2 plus cosine x. Then I could have said, well, I'm going to design my torque as equals to 2 plus cosine x times torque 1. Okay? And so then I could have just replaced this here with torque 1. Now I've got a nice little constant mx double dot sitting there, and that will make my layup and off analysis a lot nicer. So I'm going to continue this way, and then I'm going to back up and I want to show the more complicated way. Um, so now I've just got a constant times my x double dot here. So if I multiply m times r dot, or, or well, I can do that in a second. So if I say r dot is equal to e double dot, which is equal to xd double dot minus x double dot plus alpha e dot. And I'm not going to expand out e dot because I can measure I know x d dot and I know x dot. So I see an x double dot term here, and I want to get my dynamic model in there because that's where my control sits. And now I've just got this constant m multiplied by it. So I'm going to say, well, OK, if I multiply my constant m times everything, then I get mr dot is equal to m x d double dot minus my dynamics. Um, which is going to equal to plus, it's going to equal minus um, 1 half m x dot 
sine of x over 2 plus cosine x um, plus L cosine x over 2 plus cosine x minus torque 1 plus M alpha E dot. Okay, so now I can sit back and look at it. That's unmeasurable. That's an unknown constant. That's an unknown constant. That's an unknown constant. But I know x d double dot. I know e dot. I know x dot sine of x, 2 plus cosine x, cosine x. I know all the rest of it. So um, I'm thinking that a good choice here is that I can take all this stuff and write it as y theta, where y is a regression matrix, and I'll just go ahead and write it all out. So y equals something times my unknown constant theta, which is going to be m and l. Okay. So the thing that's going to be multiplied by the l is just going to be cosine x over 2 plus cosine x. And the thing that's going to be multiplied by m is going to be x d double dot minus 1 half x dot sine of x over 2 plus cosine x plus alpha e dot. All right, so man, that was great because that just reduced all that ugly sines, cosines, trig stuff to m r dot is equal to y theta minus tau 1, where theta is unknown. So like we did in class, we said, well, let's let tau 1 equals to, how about kr, that's going to give me my minus kr squared. Um, and how about a plus y theta hat? So then mr dot equals y theta tilde minus kr. All right, so now I do my Lyapunov function. Uh, I said these were n by ones or no scalars. One half m r squared plus one half theta tilde uh, transpose times theta tilde, and I could have put a gamma in there if I would have wanted to. Then I take v dot is equal to two cancels there. I get r times m r dot which is y theta tilde minus kr plus, th plus theta tilde transpose times the time derivative of theta tilde. The time derivative of theta tilde, theta tilde is equal to theta minus theta hat. Theta is a constant, so it's negative theta hat dot. Okay, so v dot is equal to negative kr squared, and now I design theta hat dot is equal to r y theta tilde. I'm sorry. I, 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 that was like, I can't even embarrass to even write that down. Is equal to uh, r y transpose. Okay, because then I'll have plus r y theta tilde minus um, r theta tilde transpose y transpose. I take the transpose of this, which is equal to minus r y theta tilde. So that cancels with that, leaving me with this term. Okay, so now at this point, you need to say, okay, this is a negative semi-definite result. 
because my Lyapunov function had this variable transformation theta tilde in there that I didn't account, that I don't have down here and never will in adaptive control, at least without some uh, fancy stuff. So what am I going to do? I've got a non-autonomous system that's negative semi-definite. So, so barbless lemma should be screaming in your ears now. R is a scalar. Theta tilde is not. Y is not. Right, but when you multiply those two together, don't you get a scalar? You do get a scalar. Okay, so, okay, so and that's why, the transpo that's why you can just take the transpose of the single element, because the transpose of a scalar is just, a sca it's just the same. Okay. All right, so based on this equation and this equation, I know what? I know that R and theta tilde are bounded. Now a lot of you made some strange statements regarding the tracing the boundedness. So based on the fact that theta tilde is bounded, this is bounded, that's a constant, so theta hat must be bounded. Um, if I look in, all right, so if R is bounded, that implies that E dot and E are bounded based on our linear analysis arguments that we talked about in class. If E dot and E are bounded, that implies that X and X dot are bounded. So then I look in Y. I've got XD. XD is, is, is bounded. We know that off the top. We don't have to be concerned about the denominator because it's always positive. X dot is bounded. Sine of X is bounded. E dot is bounded. This is always bounded. So now we've shown, so all of this stuff means that Y is bounded. So if we look at our torque, we've shown that X is bounded. We've shown that R is bounded. We've shown that theta hat is bounded. We've shown that Y is bounded. So now we can conclude that our torque is bounded. Okay, we can look at our closed loop air system. R is bounded, Y is bounded, theta tilde is bounded. So R dot is bounded, which implies that R is uniformly continuous. A lot of people didn't write down uniformly continuous. And based on this equation here, I know that R is a member of L2. Okay, so the fact that R and R dot are bounded, R is uniformly continuous, R is L2, means that R goes to zero. Our linear analysis arguments mean that E dot and E go to zero. And if E goes to zero, that means X goes to XD as time goes to infinity. So this was plus five. And as, as Will put, bam. Okay, so uh, the next class I'll go over the more complicated solution where you have in your Lyapunov function uh, the 2 plus cosine x. And we'll field more qu any questions about this and we'll continue backstepping. We'll finish backstepping. Be a good way to end the week. <laughs>